Welcome back to another book highlight for chapter 41 of My Father the King. I want to look at deception and how it works because in this chapter, it's a very intense moment. David and his family have fled Jerusalem to go north to draw the fighting away from the city. And because Mephi had this argument with David right before, he didn't go with him. And David didn't think to ask him to go. And so now they're waiting for Absalom to take over and Mephi is trying not to panic because his wife and son are panicking. And this is exactly the development that he feared. He's afraid that David is giving up. He's afraid that David is just going to hand over the kingdom to Absalom without any regard for the people that Absalom is going to kill. And uh, Ziba, who is Mephi's abusive former guardian, who has kind of been staying in the background up till now, takes this opportunity to try to plant seeds of deception in Mephi's heart in order to betray him. But right now, Mephi does not know that Ziba is going to betray him. He probably would have known if he thought about it a little bit, but this is um, a dramatization of what is hinted at in the Bible, which is that uh, Mephibosheth tells King David later that Ziba prevented him from following David. And uh, the Bible seems to indicate that Ziba was lying about this. And so this is my dramatization of um, that deception. So I want to look um, a little bit deeper, though, at how the deception unfolds and a couple of things that I want to note about deception that I think are very important for us as Christians to be aware of. First, if, you're, if you've ever read Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen or seen any of the movies, you'll know that Mr. Wickham is a deceiver in that story. And even if you don't know the story, all you need to know here is that he slanders the hero, Mr. Darcy, to the heroine, Elizabeth. But the reason that he's able to plant those seeds of deception in her mind is because she's open to it. She's already looking for a reason to hate Darcy. So she immediately receives Mr. Wickham's uh, assessment of Darcy without thinking about it or checking to see if it's true because Mr. Wickham is being vulnerable with her and she already is predisposed to like him and hate Darcy. This mirrors sort of what Ziba is doing to Mephi in this chapter. Deception can appear vulnerable. That is the first thing that I want to point out. Just because someone looks like they're caring enough to reveal their inner soul and their passionate feelings you don't have to be paranoid, but don't just swallow it hook, line, and sinker. You need to consider the impact this person has had on your life and consider the fruit that follows them. Does this go back to what the Holy Spirit is saying, or is it just a fleshly perspective that's coming from their own fear or their own agenda? Deception tries to present itself in a way that's relatable to you, uh, appealing to something personal in your life. The worst kind of lie has a ring of truth to it, appealing to something you've seen as fact in your life. But that doesn't mean it's genuine. It doesn't mean you should pattern your actions and decisions after it. The other thing that deception does is push us to some kind of fleshly urgency. Ziba's trying to push Mephi into one of the things that really messed up King Saul's reign. What destroyed Saul's reign? Disobedience and a desire to manufacture fleshly plans to make up for the fact that God hadn't come through in his estimation. Saul acted like, I'm on my own now. God has made himself my enemy. Samuel is my enemy. I have to be my own God. I have to make all the decisions from here on out that is best for me and what I feel is best for the kingdom. But this was a bad thing to do. This was a disaster, honestly. Of course, he had made himself God's enemy instead of repenting and drawing closer like David did. And this is what Z was pressuring Mephi into. He's basically telling him there are too many negatives piling up. It's starting to get scary and we don't see God rushing to change it. So we should assume that he wants us to help ourselves. And in this state, men and women come up with the worst plans. We make a mess of things when we head off on our own, assuming that God is old news. When you consider deception, think of how scammers work today, whether it's online or on the phone. Scamming is more prevalent in today's culture than ever. And one way you can usually spot a scam is by looking for some kind of threat and a time-sensitive pressure to act on something. They push you to wire money or click a link or follow some kind of direction, but they usually try to use urgency or a threat to push you to do it without thinking it through. And this is what Ziba is doing to Mephi. You have to take action now without consulting God or considering David or anything because 
you're painted into a corner here. And if you don't do something, it's going to be a mess that you can't clean up. But this mentality hinges on something else that the enemy loves to use against us. This lie is at the center of every deception. You are alone. You have no other option. You're the victim. Everything is unfair and unclear, and God has left you without instruction, so all you have left is to come up with a fleshly plan to take care of yourself. The hook is the thing you already have mixed feelings about, and then the enemy uses that to try to deceive you into thinking you're so alone and victimized that you have no choice and have to move on this rash decision without thinking about it or facing any implications of what you're actually doing. One major way we see this play out in our world with tragic consequences is with abortion. The key component that has to be present for abortion to happen is isolation and deception. So what's the answer to all this? What leads Mephi to the answer, even though he seems to be stuck in the desperate situation that he's feared for many years? Initially, Mephi doesn't recognize the deception until it's almost too late, because to some extent, he's let it in. He's given it a foothold in his heart and not taken responsibility to bar the doors to that kind of deception. We're not talking about dousing your own concerns or your own feelings, but the enemy wants you to look so hard at the confusion that you rush past the Lord because he's done you wrong and left you as an orphan. And this has been the biggest lie of Mephi's life. And there is a consequence for Mephi allowing that lie to have any weight in his life. But ultimately, he makes the right decision to fight the deception that's come against him. And this is the action that he takes, the action that will save us from deception, God's perspective. When you're confused, pause. Don't be led by the rush and pull of others' fear or even your own concern. Go into the sanctuary of the Lord, which means getting alone with him, and pray. Consult the Lord. The enemy fights tooth and nail to prevent us from doing this because when we do it, we get God's perspective. And it's the perspective of heaven that resets our mind and heart and stabilizes us. Mephi remembers what his true legacy is, not Saul's power-hungry torment, Jonathan's faithfulness. That's his legacy. His father, that's what he has chosen before God. And just because circumstances are crazy and scary doesn't mean he has to choose rebellion and betrayal. Things are still complicated and uncertain. He still has questions. But when you focus on God and allow your actions to flow out of who he is and what he's revealed to you, that's the path of peace. And it will lead to blessing and honor, even if it's a difficult path to walk in the natural. Even if, like Mephi, you can't walk and you're literally stuck having to watch the worst circumstances play out around you, with God's perspective, we have a sustainable way forward. When you see yourself with the Lord's eyes and forget not all his benefits, David wrote in Psalm 103, it's impossible to see yourself as an orphan. So whose vision are you going to live out and believe, the enemies or God's? You have more with the Lord than without him, even in times of trouble. Hold fast to the truth that the enemy wants you to forget. God has not left you. Even if some people around you have left him and will persecute you for standing with him, you don't have to join them in life-altering mistakes.